Well, it appears the Nintendo Switch 2 floodgates are definitely open, or they're at least starting to crack at the seams and leak just a little bit. You guys know we've had all these supposed leaks and rumors and stuff happening really back to last week. We can argue they've been happening for a while, but it's been kind of quiet for really since the delay was announced back in February, and I say announced, it was just rumored, right? Well... Last week, things started spicing back up, and this week, we actually have more information coming from Moore's Law is Dead. If you don't know who that person is, they are a YouTube channel that has a ton of connections across the industry. They've been cited at many different websites in the past, not just for leaks they've had related to the Switch 2, but things with PlayStation 5 Pro that everyone else is corroborated and said is correct uh and other leaks as well he's, he's had gpu leaks and cpu leaks and he seems to have connections in the industry at these various companies that actually make the products and with that information he just puts it out there and hey that's where pretty much a lot of his clout has come from so this is what he's known for and he's basically considered pretty reliable but still we can't verify any of this, so it's just a rumor. If you guys remember, last year he did a video going over various leaks for Nintendo Switch 2, and we will put those specs up a bit later in this video if you want to reference those and think they might be legit. It's not like we know. It comes from a former NVIDIA employee, but he is still in contact with other employees at NVIDIA, and that's what happened today, or well, yesterday, when he did a podcast. He has the Broken Silicon podcast on his channel, episode 255 in particular, where he talked about the Nintendo Switch 2 because they were going over all the handheld developments out there in the space with AMD and NVIDIA and all these different handhelds coming out in the PC space and they naturally got to Nintendo Switch 2 and he divulged information he was told by an NVIDIA employee quite recently uh, and that information involves specs and speeds and what to expect from the GPU didn't really hear much on the CPU side unfortunately now what did he say we should be expecting for performance? Well, it turns out that in docked mode, and again, this is according to his sources and what he said, the target inside NVIDIA has been for docked mode of Nintendo Switch 2 to hit four teraflops. Now, you guys might go, what the hell does that mean? Look, it is a floating point measure. It is a fact-based measure that's very easy to calculate. But still, you might think of four teraflops and start thinking, oh man, that sounds like a PlayStation 4 Pro or an Xbox One X. That seems halfway decent here. But here's the thing, you can't directly compare teraflops of AMD and NVIDIA architecture. So as an example, uh, the teraflops that are happening inside of the technology in an Xbox one or a PlayStation 4 is one really, really, really old technology and two, not really relevant to overall performance. Uh, in fact, there was this video that I think Digital Foundry, I believe, did a long time ago on a podcast where they talked about trying to use teraflops as a measure of performance. It's only like a measurative performance against itself. So if you have different tiers of Lovelace GPUs, you can definitely use teraflops as a measure of performance between those GPUs. But going between, say, you know, teraflops on a, you know, a, a, an older GPU to a newer one, you know, even Ampere to Lovelace wouldn't really be directly comparable in that way. So that's just even within similar architectures and, and, and obviously, you know, one company. Now imagine how different it is between, you know, NVIDIA and AMD, right? There's going to be a wide gap of difference here. Now, four teraflops is still, though, pretty exciting and especially when we think about that the four teraflops of performances we're thinking about in like the playstation 4 pro is on such old technology and also amd to be clear uh, nvidia has generally been more performative than amd's technology in the gpu space now we have to also consider that even if this is based on ampere technology which is what all the reports have said the funny thing is ampere technology is not only significantly newer than what's being used, you know, inside of PlayStation 4 Pro, it's also right in line with, if not better than, what is inside the PlayStation 5, which is obviously something to consider. Just knowing that these technologies came out around the same time, although NVIDIA was still kicking the crap out of anything AMD was putting out around those time periods. So, uh, yeah, this performance is 
going to be four teraflops in docked mode that is performative better than, say, what four teraflops in a PlayStation 5 would be. Now, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series, we're talking between 10 to 12 teraflops there. But again, while it's not going to be as powerful as those, what the, the performance level there is still going to be punching above what the weight would suggest. But I guess this is all obviously hypothetical, or not even hypothetical, this is all assuming that he's correct. Now, we also heard about what the clock speeds might be in handheld mode. Unfortunately, we didn't get clock speeds for docked mode, but the thing is, his NVIDIA source told him that the clock speeds uh, in, in the performance in docked mode is significantly higher than in handheld mode. And we gotta talk about what that means because he did say, well, what are we talking about? Like 800 megahertz? And his source said lower than that. Now, look, if we think about lower than 800 megahertz, you're starting to think about the base Nintendo Switch. Now, going over some specs that we've seen from the base Nintendo Switch, in docked mode, the Switch tops out at 768 megahertz on the GPU. Now, let's say that that's around the range that we're hearing for this, that would obviously mean, well, handheld mode, a Switch 2 has similar megahertz to docked mode, uh, you know, of Switch. I mean, does it really sound that bad? Well, I would argue it doesn't sound that bad, but then remember, that's a completely different generation of stuff. This is something that's on five, six year newer tech. So like, it's not even directly comparable, just even with the megahertz. But getting into some of the Switch stuff itself to put this in perspective, Handheld mode originally on the Nintendo Switch ran at a 306.2 megahertz, and then they added another extra mode at 384.2 megahertz. Uh, those were two modes that were available to devs heading into launch of the Switch. Now that's roughly uh, 40 to 44 percent of the performance of what the Switch could do in docked mode. Now they ended up later down the line in 2019, 2020, adding another mode in handheld, and they allowed the clock speeds of the CPU to be adjusted at the time as well, which we're not taking into consideration here when we're just talking about GPU performance. But they included a 460 megahertz mode as well in handheld. Now obviously this would lead to lower battery life, but Nintendo determined there was enough heat dissipation that it wasn't harmful to hold in your hand uh, if developers wanted to take advantage of extra performance, which most of them did. Obviously, some indie games might go with the lower clocks, but for the most part, all the AAA games and handheld, once that mode became available, they used that mode. Nintendo also uh, enabled a dynamic mode uh, during that time period as well, where based on what was going on on screen and the performance load, the, the switch could automatically like switch between the different clock speeds, which is essentially how a PC works anyways. Like a PC will up clock and down clock depending on what's going on and various heat levels. So that's actually like pretty neat and obvious. Glad Nintendo did that. And I, I suspect even with this 700 whatever uh, megahertz something mode that exists in the current Nintendo Switch 2, don't be surprised if extra modes that are clocked even higher end up existing during the Switch 2's lifespan. But I, one thing to remember here, obviously, this is all rumors that we can't verify. It just comes from one single source who claims he's got contacts at NVIDIA, who's, but to be fair, been proven to have contacts at NVIDIA in the past by correctly leaking things for GPUs and all of that that have come true once they were announced and released. I just want to note that the Nintendo Switch 2 sounds like to me to be exactly what I wanted it to be. It might not be on the latest and greatest Lovelace architecture, and it may not be, uh, you know, trying to do what Xbox and, and PlayStation did at the time. Remember when they came out in 2020, they were literally using the best tech that AMD had at the time. Maybe not the top tier of that given tech, of course. They had GPUs more powerful than what the hell is, and CPUs more powerful than what's in a PlayStation 5, but they were the same architecture, right? They were using the latest architecture that AMD had available. And well, yeah, they're not gonna do that here with Switch 2 in handheld because, hello, uh, it could be quite costly to do something like that. What they are going to end up doing here is really showcasing that you don't need to do that when you've got other features going on, such as deep learning super sampling, which we already know is present with the platform based on other reports and rumors. And it sounds like Nintendo might even be working on their own version of this that's fully customized directly for the hard embedded hardware of the Nintendo Switch 2, which is also really fascinating because remember DLSS has to work across a wide array of NVIDIA tech and different specs and CPUs. Whereas when you have just specific targeted hardware where that chip is not really gonna change, the megahertz and stuff like that, the gigahertz might change over time, but the actual 
will like it, it, you know the the chip itself really isn't going to change much over the lifetime of switch 2 you're able to custom design a dls form that will specifically take best advantage of that given hardware and that is something we've seen in patents that nintendo appears to be working on so we all see nintendo has been willing to use fsr 1.0 uh, that's another form of upscaler and that's actually not even a great one so the thing about FSR as well, that's AMD's sort of solution, is FSR can work on any GPU architecture. It's a software-based solution instead of a hardware-based one like DLSS is. Nintendo and developers can also use the latest FSR tech on this system as well if they prefer to go that route. So, you know, Nintendo will just have access to multiple avenues, as will the developers, to really take advantage of this hardware, whereas FSR is only just now kind of coming over to PlayStation and Xbox, but they do not have access to any of the DLSS tools or the custom cores that exist for it. So I do think that we have to consider in the grand scope that Nintendo Switch 2 is going to be powerful enough. Is it going to look dated in five, six years? Well, sure. But also, we could argue today's technology is making the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X look dated. I know we're only just now getting exclusive games and they look really good, but look at what's happening on the, on the you know, PC side. Like I have a 14900K and a 4080 Super in my streaming slash rendering rig, and the funny thing about that is uh, that's significantly more powerful than anything going on with PlayStation and Xbox, because that's just how technology goes. It's constantly moving forward. There's practically yearly advancements in tech, so no matter what Nintendo puts out, it was always going to feel dated in five to six years, but it doesn't matter. What matters is how can Nintendo best take advantage of this stuff and third parties. And we've already heard about a ton of games coming to Nintendo Switch 2, right? We have things like the latest stuff from Midori saying that all these Sega and Atlas remakes and remasters and rebooting of all these classic franchises that looked fantastic in the trailer are coming, right? We have massive expectations that a game like Vision of Mana that's coming out this year is probably going to end up on Switch 2 because the entire Mana Mana series has always existed on Nintendo. It's just it probably can't exist specifically on Switch due to what they're doing. So there's that as well. And by the way, they've been asked about whether it'll be on Switch. They said no. There was sort of a hint drop that a future Nintendo platform could have it. So everyone's just kind of waiting for Switch 2 to be announced. We're hearing about a lot of third parties, but we know Call of Duty is going to be on this thing for a decade. I just know that it seems to me Things are moving fast, and I think the reason that the floodgates appear to be happening and the dam is coming down isn't just anticipation that Nintendo might say something on May 7th. I actually think it's in lieu of anything Nintendo might have to say. It's that I actually believe this month, the month of May, the system is starting to enter mass manufacturing. And if that's the case where parts are being mass produced and assembled and all of that, that doesn't mean it's going to be launching this year, by the way. But if that's the case, then that's why these things are coming out because everything's finalized. We already know the dev kits are out there and now everyone's more willing to talk about it because guess what? Uh, there's going to be, be like lay people in a factory putting their hands on this stuff to put it together and get the components made. And look, that's when you know, even more detailed leaks start to come on. I mean, you might even get an entire die shot, not the x-ray die shot we want, but you literally might get a picture of the internals leak on the internet. You might get a picture of the shells leak on the internet. We've already had that happen throughout the Switch generation with the light and the OLED, like all that stuff ended up leaking out. So, hey, we had a direct leak for the Zelda OLED end up leaking out from factories. So I'm just pointing out that as this thing enters mass manufacturing, Clearly, the floodgates are just going to open up even more. And obviously, once Nintendo announces the damn thing, all bets are off because once Nintendo acknowledges it and a time frame for it to come out, and they even do it on an actual, and let's say they announce it in June or July, third parties are going to start letting the floodgates open themselves without needing rumors. They're just going to straight up announce their projects for the platform. And that is what's really exciting as well because even if Nintendo doesn't give us all the launch lineup and all the games with the reveal. The bottom line is once the cat's out of the bag, the developers will be free to start saying our games are coming to that platform. And look, Switch 2 is going to have more third-party support, I think, than anything Nintendo has seen since the Super Nintendo. We literally heard from Tom Henderson last year from Insider Gaming that you know by September of this year, we were going to hear a whole bunch of and also on Switch 2 happening with all these big AAA games. Uh, you know, the one big hope is obviously Grand Theft Auto 6. I think that's the one 
mystery out there if we can pull that one off but hey nintendo hopefully you contacted rockstar and found a way to make that work even if it involved writing a nice big fat check you know rockstar will take money so if you're writing a big big enough check you know they could make a version for switch 2 and the funny thing is people talk about how uh there's no way that that by the way the gta could be on a switch 2 well they're gonna want grand theft auto 6 to run on all those handheld pcs that are getting really popular and all those handheld PCs are not as powerful as a PlayStation 5. I'm just noting that if they have to make it run on stuff like that, it's probably going to be able to run on Switch 2. Just throwing that out there. Anyways, you guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. Are you getting excited? Are you getting hyped? I know I'm getting hyped and excited for Nintendo Switch 2. Uh, if you enjoyed this content, I'd appreciate a like or a subscription or both. Uh, let me know your thoughts. I gave you my thoughts. We'll see what else crops up. I don't know how much more can really happen at this point before Nintendo just reveals it uh, outside of pictures from manufacturing. Because it feels like, uh, you know, we're, we're starting to now get teraflop numbers. What's next? We're going to get actual clock speeds and exact specs for the CPU or something like that. I mean, this is getting insane, man. We're, we got to be fine. I mean, we've even heard about the about the, the, the NAND flash being used in the damn cartridges, if you, if you think about some of the rumors out there. Things are just... They're going fast at the moment. I don't know when it's going to slow down. Hopefully May 7th, Nintendo at least gives us a small little morsel. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll catch you in the next video.